Many of them have died because of various things that have happened to them. This one has been vandalized in many ways. They… the invaders demolished these temples and I think two or three times it was rebuilt. The recent rebuilding, uh, their aesthetics changed into, you know, like <laughs> this bathroom kind of uh, aesthetics. Don't laugh at a bathroom, it's a very useful place <laughs> Some time ago <laughs> when someone asked me something about building, someone was wanting to build a temple slightly into the road in Delhi, because, uh, you know, whatever, it's a good place to set up any business, not on the side, slightly into the road so that you can't miss the place. So someone came and asked me, what do you think about this? I said, uh, I think uh, we… in the streets of Delhi, I don't think we need a temple, we need toilets. So, they asked, do you think toilets are more important than temple? That's not the point, but peeing is more important than praying. <laughs> five times a day whether you pray or not, this you have to do five times a day. <laughs> so, next day they printed, uh, you know, the headline was, Sadhguru says, peeing more important than praying. <laughs> Why I'm saying this is, this is a fantastic science, how to use life energies to enhance human life in such a phenomenal way. Unfortunately, we've fallen on bad times. We've lost that sense of what it is and all kinds of ridiculous things are happening around it. People have turned it into not even a good business, a horrible form of business. You go there, they're almost trying to take the flesh off your body, all those people. You know, they're plucking at you like this <laughs> So, they become bad places, but still they have not been able to kill them. That's the beauty of it. If you… Uh, if any of you are going on the Himalayan Yatra this time, are you? Some of you are? Himalayan trek? Not the Kailash, the Himalayan trek. If you're going on the Himalayan trek, you will see uh, the temple at Uttarkashi. It's two thousand and uh, twenty-five, thirty years old now. It's like reverberating in such a fabulous way. People who created it, they're like masters of life. What they create, you can't kill no matter what you do. This temple is also reasonably well kept. They'd set up a tradition, the same families are still, you know, doing the maintenance and things. They kept it quite okay, not very good but quite okay. They're not bad like these places. And the invaders didn't bother to go climb up Himalayas and demolish temples. <laughs> So, they're very powerful tools, very, very powerful tools if one knows how to make use of it. You can reorganize, if you know how to do this, you can reorganize the constitution of your system in the presence of a linga like that, completely. You can rewire your system completely if you know how to make use of them. So for every kind of linga that they created, they had a specific sadhana attached to it. Sadhana is all gone. Temple has become like a monument for somebody who died long ago. Unfortunately, it's gone there because the necessary sadhana is gone. For example, in South India, they built these five temples for five elements. You know this? People who come from Tamil Nadu should know. Hmm? For every element, they built a temple creating… making the whole geography like a human body so that people could make use of it and do the necessary sadhana. 
Now we divided the states, one temple went into that state, another temple went into this state, you know. <laughs> and the sadhana is gone, that's the worst part. We thought we will make this five temple tour with a group of people doing three, three days sadhana in each one of these things because this is… these temples were built for Bhuta Shuddhi. Bhuta Shuddhi is the fundamental practice in the yogic culture. You know what's Bhuta? Not that, not Bhut. You know what's a Bhuta? Bhuta means the elements. So Bhuta Shuddhi means becoming free of the elements. If you become free of the five elements, tell me what all… what all are you free of? Hmm? Everything that's physical, you're free of it, right? That's being spiritual. Ultimately, all spiritual process originates in terms of sadhana. All spiritual process, all sadhana originates from this fundamental sadhana called Bhutta Shuddhi. Many variations have been done, but the essential Bhutta Shuddhi is such a powerful practice. Generally, ascetics stuck to it, other people lost it, now they have also lost it. The temples are still intact, fortunately. Even now it could be made use of, we thought we will make this tour but due to unmanageable numbers, we've given up. <laughs> How do I tour in Tamil Nadu with a group of people without gathering <laughs> thousands of people? So, they're very powerful tools. I don't know how many of these Jyotirlingas are still alive, but some of them are and they're very, very powerful tools. If someone has the necess… is it in… I mean, uh, this Ujjain is in Maharashtra? Ud Madhya Pradesh, oh, okay. So if any of you have the necessary influence or the money, if you can change this bathroom aesthetics of this great temple, it's such a great possibility, but they make it look like a bathroom. Bathrooms… this happened. There was a junior officer working in the PMO's office, the Prime Minister's office. After some time, he moves, moved his table from one end of his office to another, there to another place, two days there, two days here, two days here, everywhere he moved. Then he moved into the secretary's room, then he moved out into the corridor, then he moved further down the corridor and one day he set up his table in the men's room and started working there. Then everybody was noticing this uh, migration process happening. Nobody wanted to say anything. Then they, when they saw he established his uh, table in the men's room, they knew something is really wrong. But nobody wanted to approach him directly. So they called the office psychiatrist. They said he's working from the men's room. So the psychiatrist went and spoke to him, but he looked quite normal, he speaks quite well, everything is fine. Then gently he asked him, why have you set up your table in the men's room? So the officer said, after moving all over, I realized this is the only place where people know what they're doing. <laughs> So maybe that's a reason these aesthetics have come <laughs>